Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome back to my all AMD PC in the Corsair 275R. Now, after I finished the last video, I made a few changes, and there's a few more changes I've decided to plan going forward. First of all, I've decided that I want to leave this computer in this case because the cooling is so much better than the previous cases that it was in. I'll then have that the Thermaltake case as a backup for future use. Also, I want to upgrade the fans a little bit. Just so happens, yesterday, I got a new order in. I had ordered this, I don't know, maybe about two weeks ago, and it was on back order, and it finally came in. And it's a set of Leon Lee BR Lite 120 RGB fans. Now, these are PWM fans. So when I was first received this, I was thinking I would just replace the front two fans in the case, the ones that came with the case that are not RGB and are not PWM. But you know what I decided to do? I'll put the whole three in. I'll take the Cooler Master PWM RGB fan out of the back and I'll replace it as well. And I'll save that for a future build as well. So let me take a look at these fans first of all, give you an idea of what I'm dealing with. This actually was pretty cheap. I'll put up on the screen right now my invoice for this. So I got all three fans for just a little over $25. If I try to do the same thing with the Cooler Master ones, it'll be more like $45. And if I really wanted to go to the high end, which I may do in my supercomputer later this year, or more likely early next year, then I'll put the Cooler Master 120 millimeter PWM RGB fans in as well. And those come in white or black, so that'll be great. Because I haven't, well, it's going to be in a white case, so I guess white would probably be the best way to go. But we got a bunch of cables and instructions and screws that go along with it. It has a little controller, I believe, that came with this. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to use this. This particular motherboard has enough connectors on it to support three fans. So I may just leave it for purposes of the PWM part of it anyway. I think I'll just leave it so it uses the motherboard rather than this little controller card. And I'll save it for future use in case I run into a case that doesn't support more than one fan. It's usually the case and or the motherboard. So we'll see how that goes, but I'll save this for now. These are the buffers. These are the rubber buffers that have to go on the fan. So I will have to use these, three of them for three fans. Some instructions. This really how to set up the little controller card they give you for the PWM. It doesn't control the RGB, just the, the fan speeds. So it's standard RG, uh, RGB cables. I did make sure of that before I ordered it. So it's a regular four pin. And they give you a, a three by adapter. Now, since I have in here a RGB fan on the CPU, I want to include that. So three is not going to be enough. What I've done is I'll have, it, have to have at least four. I happen to have a spare one of those lying around, a four by RGB adapter that I had bought a while back that I just never used. That's why you always save these things. You never know they'll come in handy. So I got this that'll replace this one. The fans themselves, let's take one out. Now they really looked good online. Actually, they got a nice aluminum frame to it. I had read that, but I thought it was just maybe aluminum painted. This is real aluminum on both sides of the frame. So it'll actually will be fairly good because that'll, that'll give it some steadiness and maybe it'll vibrate less, well, at least once I put these buffers on. The cables, standard RGB. And what's nice about this, well, that's great to know. I didn't really realize that. It has both connectors. So you can do either, looks like male or female, is that true? Yeah, it has both a male and a female connector to it. So you get your choice of how you want to hook it up and you can save those little adapter things that they give you. This little covers for the male one. And then of course we got the regular PWM fan connector and it's a standard four wire PWM fan. So it'll go right on the motherboard. And all three are supposed to be the same. I expect that's the case. And I'll put these fans in with the RGB. Take out the existing two fans that came with the case that I still have in there, the original ones, and then this Cooler Master one that I had added at the end of my last video. In addition to that though, I wanna have a RGB controller since this one doesn't have one. I bought a couple of these. Uh, these are really cheap and I actually have another one on order because I like them a lot. They are Wi-Fi controlled RGB controllers and they also have the option of using a remote control, which I think I've showed in other videos. So I'm gonna put this in. In order to make this work, this only costs about 10 bucks. I really like it through Amazon. 
I had to make another power adapter. So again, I took my four pin male Molex connector and I connected to it a regular 2.5 millimeter power connector to it. Standard polarities, outside is negative, inside is positive. I've already tested this, so it does work. And this will connect up to the power connector here. And then the rest of the RGB will feed off of this. I'll put the splitter on it and we can go from there. But in addition to that, I wanted to throw a little color on the bottoms because even with those fans, all four, all three, well, all four fans counting the CPU with RGB, there's really no color down in the bottom here. So what I did is I had a little extra piece of RGB strip. Now this had been a remnant left over from um, some work that I had done previously in terms of adding these little RGB strips in some of my other cases. Now, unfortunately, it didn't have any connectors on it. So went to my soldering skills and my soldering equipment and I created two cables for it. Inside of these are four wires. They're color coded appropriately, black for the 12 volts, red, blue, and green for the RGB. And I put it at both ends. You know why I did that? That way I can have actually five connectors out of this. I plan on trying to stick this down underneath the PSU shroud somehow. I'm gonna have to pull everything out of the PSU shroud to do that. I made sure I cut it to the right length so it should fit underneath there and then give you a nice glow through the vent there at the top and maybe over to the right where you have the, the opening for a third fan in the front. So I've already tested this so it does work. And that way I'll have everybody in sync with the remote control except for, unfortunately, the CPU fan. There is no easy way with this particular motherboard, and I think most motherboards, to actually take over control from the motherboard itself. So the RGB that's along the trace end of the motherboard over to the right here. If you look at it carefully, there's a little bit of a trace RGB over here on the side of the motherboard right there on that edge. You can't control that. You can't take over from the motherboard. I could actually load the software and control that. And then I could connect all the RGB to the motherboard, but then I can't remote control it. So you can't get everything. So I'm gonna go with the remote control for everything except for that little strip along the side there. Now, in addition to that, I got a couple of questions that were on the video that I posted when I first did the review and the testing of this case about that screw I had to leave out in the upper right hand corner. How I handled that, if I handled it, and I actually did. I actually went ahead and put in a change to the little stud that holds the screw. So what I'll do is I'll show you what I did in that as well in this video. Now, if you get anything that you like out of this video or it helps you in any way, please do me a favor and consider subscribing to my channel. The first thing I'm gonna show you is what I did with that screw up in the corner there. I'll show you actually what I put in place. I have some other pieces that are similar to that and I'll show you exactly what I did. I won't pull the motherboard out again because I don't wanna get involved with all the cable connectors again. And I'll show you up close what it looks like now. Okay, so here's a fairly up close and I'll try to zoom in even further with the editor of what I did with the screw. As you can see, there are little washers towards the bottom of it. It's kind of hard to see here. Same screw that I was originally going to put in there, but I changed the stud. And what I changed it to, I changed it to this. So here's the original stud, the black stud that was in there. And I replaced it with this brash stud that I got out of my spare parts packages. I never throw anything away as I might have indicated in a previous video. As you can see, it's not only a longer one, about three millimeters longer in itself, but it also has a longer thread to it, which is important because even that extra length wasn't enough. So what I had to do was add three of these washers in. I kept adding them until I reached the motherboard. And when I reached the motherboard, then I knew we were good. And I was able to then secure that particular screw in that corner to the stud. And now I don't have to worry and my OCD is satisfied. Now I'm gonna move on to installing the new fans and the new RGB. Oh, by the way, the reason I wanted those washers underneath the stud was that way I know what's gonna happen. I'll forget that I had made this case mod if I ever touch that again. I'll t if I ever take the motherboard out, for example, I don't want it to have it between the motherboard and the stud because when I take the screw out, then I'll have washers falling all over the place, especially with the power supply not too far away there. That's not a good idea. So that's why I did it that way. Anyway, let me prepare the fans and what I'll do is I'll speed through this uh, on the video so that it doesn't waste any any particular time now the actual airflow of the fans let's see if it has an indicator here to show the airflow I don't see it 
but based upon how two things based upon this grid and how the blades are formed they're slanted in just a certain way and tilted back i know that the air is going to come out this way toward the camera so i want to put them into the case this way so that they're blowing in to the case those two fans so in order to do that i want to put the anti-vibration pieces on these four only so i have it like this and i'll take these little pads out it looks like they have eight of them on each one of these little strips here so i'll only be using four of them let me pull the one out they go right where the screw is going to go there's also a filler in the middle of it so all i really want is this part of it right here Now, if you'll notice, I actually did this one in reverse, the last one, because this is the one that's going to be blowing out. So in order for that to happen, I'm going to be putting it into the case this way, the top back of the case, as you recall. So it's going to replace this fan here in the back. And as a result, it has to be this way, just like the existing one is. Okay, the fans are now installed. Let's see about installing the RGB. It's really just uh, connecting up these wires to the splitters and putting in the remote control. Well, before I do that, I gotta pull this stuff out of here. So I'll have to go ahead, and pull out the, the bay for the hard drive, the hard drive and then the bay for the hard drive. The power supply, get this bracket out for the hard drive so I can get the RGB underneath it. Okay, now I'm trying to get the RGB hooked up. I've got the controller here. I'm gonna plug in this Molex into this one exposed, and I intentionally left it that way so I could get to it very easily. So all I have to do is plug this Molex into here. There we go, that's good enough. And then this has gotta be secured. So what I'm gonna to do to secure this, I've already got the uh, four by splitter on it. This is very loose, so I'll just put the double-sided tape to hold it all in place. So I got some double-sided tape here. Always make sure you have, as I said before, the little arrow on the plastic and the little red arrow on this thing that, that represents the 12 volts. By the way, if you ever want to tighten a tie wrap, you take the cutters and you just sort of touch it just to hold it and you pull back just a little bit and you do it a couple of times, that sucks it right through and usually it breaks just like that. Like that. Now all of the RGB is hooked up. It's not wire dressed. Let's see if it comes on properly. Okay, let me just connect the power up to it. 
Let's see what we get. I see everything lit. Look at that. I not only see the back fan, I see the processor fan, I see the two front fans, and I see the little bit of glow coming from behind here and underneath from the PSU shroud. So that is perfect. That's exactly the effect that I wanted. I will wire dress the back later. Let's get this front on now. There we go. Get the front glass on. Well, that's it. Um, I have everything done the way I want, except for the wire dressing that I didn't do yet, which I'll do, and then I'll show at the end of this video. But right now, the back is a mess, but I have everything connected. As you can see, I got the effect that I wanted. All the fans are exactly as needed, all four of them. And then I have this little glow in the bottom that's coming from behind the, where the uh, PSU is, from the, inside the shroud, and then over to the right, just a little bit, just a touch, which is exactly what I wanted. I've, of course, as I said before, I can't change what the motherboard is doing. There's no way for me to take control of that. And it's all under remote control now. I just realized I did not do the tear. So let me go ahead and do that now for everybody because I know that's an important thing for everybody to be able to see that tear. So let me peel off the edge here, get around that screw. Everybody ready? So I can do it right this time. Not bad at all, except it left the screw a little too loose and it popped off. Let's do some system testing right now and see how it performs. Well, in terms of the noise testing, it didn't change that much. It got one dB louder, which is what's expected when you have PWM fans. Now, in terms of the heat testing, it actually cooled down a little bit. It went down about six tenths of a centigrade, which actually is an improvement. Again, what you'd expect to see when you put in PWM fans. If you got anything at all out of this video, please do me a favor. My head will pop up here in a moment, right here above the monitor. Please just click on it, follow along, subscribe to my channel. Be very helpful. It'll allow me to improve the quality of my videos going forward. Well, thanks for watching and take care.